converse of the corresponding angles postulate, lesson 3.3a. We're up to five previous videos that are linked in the description for the geometry playlist. We've learned that the corresponding angles postulate says, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. We learned that in video 3.2a. So we have two parallel lines, the black ones, that are cut by that red transversal, and we have corresponding angles that are congruent. Angle 1 and 5 are congruent. Angle 2 and 6 are congruent. 3 and 7 are congruent. And 4 and 8 are congruent. The converse of a theorem is found by swapping the hypothesis and conclusion. The converse of a theorem isn't automatically true. If it's true, we must be, it must be stated as a postulate or proved as a separate theorem. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit more. So, a little vocabulary. The word converse comes from the Latin conversus, which means to turn around. So, when you see converse, think turn around because we're going to be swapping the hypothesis and the conclusion, okay? So, we learned this corresponding angles postulate in 3.2a. Now we have the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. And it tells us if two coplanar lines are cut by a transversal, that red line, so that a pair of corresponding angles are congruent, see one and two are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. So, if one and two are congruent, then a is parallel to B. In this one, it said if A is parallel to B, then 1 and 2 are congruent, see? Or 1 and 5 are congruent. Whichever angle pairs are congruent, see that? So it flipped it around. And we can use the converse of the corresponding angles postulate to, and given an information to show that L is parallel to M. So if you look at our diagram, we've got line L and line M, and we've got A as our red transversal. And it's given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. Can you see angle 1 and angle 5? And angle 1 is congruent to angle 5 because they're corresponding angles. They're both on the same side of the transversal. They're both above their lines. L is parallel to M because of the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. L and M are coplanar and cut by a transversal, A. So angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent, which means L and M are parallel. Here we have a given and a diagram. The given says the measure of angle 4 is equal to 2x plus 10 degrees, and the measure of angle 8 is equal to 3x minus 55 degrees, and it's also giving us that x equals 65. So we can insert and substitute 65 for the x in the two expressions, can't we? So do you see angle 4 and angle 8 in the diagram? Their corresponding angles are both on the same side of the transversal, and they're both below the line. So let's put 65 in as x. Measure of angle 4 is equal to 2 times 65 plus 10, which equals 130 plus 10, which equals 140. And the measure of angle 8 is equal to 3 times 65 minus 55. That's 195 minus 55, which is 140. Well, we know the corresponding angles from the diagram, so they both should be congruent, so they both are 140. That makes sense, right? And the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 8 because of the transitive property of equality. If 4 is 140 and they are corresponding angles, and that means 8 equals 140, so they're equal. And angle 4 is equal to angle 8 because that's the definition of congruent angles. If they're congruent, they're equal, right? So line L is parallel to M because of the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. Now, a little recap. Conditional statement would be a hypothesis and a conclusion. The hypothesis is the if, the conclusion is the then. So we have for our hypothesis, if a pet is a pug, and our conclusion is, then the pet is a dog. Well, that's true. If you have a pet pug, then you have a dog. The converse of this conditional statement would be the conclusion first and then the hypothesis. If the pet is a dog, then the pet is a pug. Well, that's not true. Just because you have a dog doesn't mean it's a pug. So this converse is false. They can be false and they can also be true. Sometimes they're true. And if a converse is true, it must be stated as a postulate or proved as a separate theorem. I have another postulate for you. If you want to write this down, it's the parallel postulate. Through a point P, not on line L, 
there's exactly one line parallel to L. So it's telling us that if we've got this line L right here, and we have a point P that's not on it, we can draw one line parallel to L through P. See? Through a point P. And the converse of corresponding angles postulate is used to construct parallel lines. And the parallel postulate guarantees that for any line L, we can always construct a parallel line through a point that isn't on L. We can construct parallel lines. The first thing we do is draw a line L, or you could label it any letter you want. And we make a point P that isn't on L. Okay? I should say L here. That isn't on L. All right? Then we draw a line through P that intersects L down here. We can label it angle 1. Then what we do is we construct an angle congruent to 1 at P. And we did this in video 1.3. We constructed congruent angles. We constructed angles. So what we're going to do is pretty much, just for a recap here, we're going to put the point of the compass right here at angle 1, and we're going to make an arc, right like this, okay? Then we're going to put the point here where it intersected, and we're going to make another arc. Then we're going to take that measure from the intersection to that point, okay? Whatever this measure is right here, and we're going to go here and make an arc on P, and then we're going to put it here and make an arc, and then we know to get a straight edge and draw a line through P and this intersection, and that will make that parallel line, okay? So you can click the description. There'll be a link to see that one if you want to go back. But let's do a real quick review here, constructing congruent angle review. So here we have angle A. That's the one we're going to try to copy. That's the one we're going to try to make a congruent angle for. So we're going to use a straight edge to draw a ray and label the endpoint D. So that's going to be our bottom. It's going to be the copy of the bottom of A, all right? We put the compass point at A, run in the vertex there, and draw an arc that intersects both sides of A. So we want to put our compass here, and we want to draw an arc, okay? Then we label the intersections B and C. So now it looks like this, okay? All we did was put this at the vertex and make a arc that went through both of the rays of angle A so that we could say B and C. And using the same compass setting, so I haven't squeezed it or opened it more, it's still the same size as this BC, okay? Using the same compass setting, we can place the compass point at D and draw an arc that intersects the ray. And we want to make sure it's nice and big because we know there's going to be a line coming through here, isn't there? A ray. We label the intersection E. Now we put the compass point at C, our original one, right here, and open it to the distance of BC. Okay? So it's this distance, BC. And we put the point of the compass at E and draw an arc. So we put it here and drew an arc, and now we're going to put it here and draw an arc that is the same measure as these guys here, see? And we can label that intersection F. Now we've got point D and F, and we can use a straight edge to draw a line, DF, a ray, actually, right? We can draw the ray from D to F. This should be labeled D, okay? So angle D is congruent to angle A. We made an angle, this angle D, that is congruent to this angle A, okay? You can practice constructing congruent angles in parallel lines. We want to be able to construct them quickly without hesitation, okay? You can put this in your notes how I did that. Maybe you can rewind the video and go back and make notes on how I did it, okay? So remember that any given information corresponds to the hypothesis in a conditional statement. Our next lesson is proving lines parallel. We've got three converse theorems. That's 3.3b. So I hope you took good notes again, and I hope you're doing well. Hit the like button if you find my videos helpful.
It helps me with YouTube. And I hope you're going to have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.